Okay, so let's talk about conceptualism. Conceptualism is an artistic movement that involves the viewer in which the artist wants us to interpret the art for ourselves. By interpreting the art for ourselves, the art becomes a completely different work of art based on the viewer that experiences it. So we see art take cues from flexus and minimalist ideas by pushing the ideas of communication as a system. Um, this can occur as a cultural entity or it can occur as a cogwheel in a social system. So the idea really all begins with Marcel Duchamp. He ascertains that the, the idea that the artist has to create the art and that because of this process, the artist's act of creating the art can be separated from the final product of the work of art. That separation allows the artist to create art without a product whatsoever. Because of the fact that the artist is now allowed to create art without actually having a product of art, conceptual art typically has something called a trace. It's the thing that the artist creates to document the artistic process. It's considered an artifact it focuses on the artistic process. Um, conceptual art says, how does the artist develop an idea to create the final work of art? And so Duchamp is saying that, Duchamp is saying that the idea of the artist creating the art, the idea that the artist has without even having the product is art in itself. So by coming up with this idea that art is very reliant upon the artistic brain to uh, create the concept which produces the final project, um, the artist is protesting an idea called co-modification. Co-modification is the idea that the art is merely something to be bought and sold that the art is merely a pretty picture that hangs on a wall. Um, Duchamp resents this idea. He feels that artists should be uh, valued just as much as um, a scientist, should be valued just as much as someone who uh, is creating, um, or comes up with philosophies to create things. Um, I suppose you could compare it to Albert Einstein. Um, his theories of relativity didn't actually um, produce a physical object per se. Um, it produces, produced ideas and cogwheels in terms of scientific communication systems. And so Duchamp is saying the same thing. He's saying, hey, you know what, as a philosopher, as someone who comes up with a conceptual idea, my conceptual idea is just as important as the end result. So if we could separate the idea of the concept or uh, the uh, idea that we have for the art, art itself from the actual work of art, then the conceptual part of the art is art. Um, Co-modification is something that artists resist uh, vehemently in the 70s. Um, I think it was a reaction to the 1950s materialization that happened after the war. Um, but also uh, we see that artists today protest the idea of co-modification. Um, one of the most famous stories that I know about an art artist protesting co-modification is the story of Banksy. Um, he creates this work of art and he programs the frame to shred the canvas after it sells at auction. And so the bidding starts at $100,000. 
and goes all the way to $860,000. It's actually 860,000 pounds. And the minute it is sold, the canvas starts to shred. Now, Banksy had planned on the entire canvas shredding, but something went wrong. And in something going wrong, 50% of the canvas was left. So we get to see the actual concept of co-modification being shredded right in front of the eye of the beholder, the person that coveted the painting so much that he was willing to pay 860,000 pounds for the work of art. So I wanna go back to Joseph Buyas before we move on to exploring conceptual artists because Buyas really um, walks the line between conceptual art and performance art. A lot of his art has a sense of conceptualism to it, um, even though there is a final product. Part of that conceptualism is the art. Um, I would tell you the same thing about Jackson Pollock. Uh, part of the conceptualism of the process is part of his art. And so let's look at Joseph Boyas. Keep an open mind for me um, in terms of thinking about his performance and separating the concept of the performance into its own category of art. So, you know, Buyas is highly influential. He's the first European artist to come to the forefront in post-war Germany. He achieves international celebrity status by analyzing his German identity, which is not unlike most contemporary artists today. We see lots of contemporary artists that analyze their identity. Um, Buyas grows up in Cleves, which is a small town with Dutch influence in Germany. And as a young boy, he joins the circus and he learns stunt performance. Eventually, he leaves to join Hitler's Air Force. And his time in the Air Force leads him with post-traumatic stress disorder. During uh, an attack in the war, he almost dies. But he was, in, he was saved by an indigenous group of um, people that covers him in animal fat cloth, and it saves him from dying. After the war, he enrolls in Dusseldorf's Art Academy and begins a journey to find meaning through a connection with nature. Um, this experience, coupled with the Western traditions, take great note of relationship of mysticism and nature that imbues German culture. Uh, but for Buyas, the connection with nature fuels his art. Uh, he's highly influenced by the German mystic Rudolf Steiner. And because of that influence, he imbues this into his art. The particular work of art that you're looking at here is um, a image, a photograph image of a performance that he did, um, How to Explain Pictures to a Dead Hair. In the performance, he um, taps into his esoteric philosophy by creating a shamanistic persona. Um, the audience at times dismisses Buyas for his enigmatic performance. Um, they say that it's cultish and sensational. Um, whereas others feel that he has tapped into an unseen mystical world that is really the genius of his art. Um, Buyas does the work of art uh, by himself and he films and photographs it. Uh, he films and photographs for three hours. Um, it, He's moving through, during the performance, he moves through a gallery exhibition with the carcass of a hare, a large rabbit, um, and he whispers to it inaudibly. Uh, his entire head is covered with honey and gold leafing, and a felt, a felt sole is tied to his left foot and an iron soul is tied to his right foot. The action ends with Buyas seated on a stool uh, with one of its legs wrapped in felt. 
He protectively cradles the dead hair, and that's the work of art. Uh, some critics of his work say that uh, his protection of the dead hair is akin to the Madonna in the Pietà protecting Jesus. So let's talk a little bit about um, the act of the performance. He covers his head in gold leafing and honey. And he's basically trying to talk to this hair. The idea that he covers his head in the gold leafing and honey creates a sort of, uh, oh, it, it masks his identity so that he sort of shamanistically talks to the spirit of the hair. It sort of creates this otherworldly sense, I suppose, um, in which he thinks that the spirits of the hair sort of lives in, hangs out in, and he can communicate with within that sort of realm. Um, he is, he likens the hair to our intellectualizing tendencies to metaphorically burrow into the materialistic. Um, but the hair's ability to transform the earth into a habitat um, and to do it so that um, his body shape is encompassed by the earth. Um, if you've ever seen a hare burrow, um, they sort of dig this hole and dig it around the size of the way their body is shaped. And so Bouyaz is suggesting that um, humility and hares have more in common with each other than we might imagine. So Bouyaz believes that the hair, um, by digging and burrowing in the earth, is a creative act, and that we as humans can compare to the um, hair actively making a burrow by thinking about our own um, philosophies, thought processes, that we're capable of achieving so much, um, but that sometimes we intellectualize it so much that we sort of beat it to death and then it stays dead. Um, it stays dead in sort of these political and pedagogical fields, um, meaning like, you know, you as an art history professor could have a brilliant idea, but it stays in the pedagogy of art history and doesn't really permeate the world the way it should. Um, and so he speculates that in his work of art, how to explain pictures to a dead hair, that um, many people are enthralled with his work. Uh, which in the end proved to be sort of a media, a media sensation um, because their imaginations were stimulated by his performance. Uh, he thinks that he's allowing the people who are affected by his performance to rationalize in favor of mystery or questioning his art yielding results. So because of that, he has a very successful piece. People are moved by it. Um, and so he's simply making a statement that sometimes the concept of the art is more important than the final outcome. So in the 70s, he teaches and lectures about social revolution um, and the transformative powers of art. He explained uh, that this notion of transformation should include all forms of human activity. Um, 
a good example is this project, 7,000 Oaks, that began as a, um, that began as seven, and, uh, oh, sorry, uh, the 7,000 Oaks was a project that took five years. Um, he and other people plant 7,000 trees in various varieties throughout Germany, and they mark them with a steel marker. The marker's made of stone and um, stood as a constant and contrast to the ever-changing growing tree. Uh, the tree as it grows changes and so that piece of steel that is um, holding the stone in the tree doesn't change. It's the constant. Um, he says it represents the idea that two natural yet oppositional qualities are complementary and coexist harmonious, harmoniously, harmoniously, sorry. So you've got, you know, this thing that never changes, it's stagnant, it's made of stone, and the tree is a living organic thing. So that juxtaposition of the two um, becomes important. Uh, he works with local governments to determine where to plant the trees and the organization of the project results in a series of conversations among the participants um, concerning different issues that uh, impact us on a daily basis. They impact city planning, um, they impact future generations in terms of city planning. The work of art really signifies Buyaz's ideas that art has an ability to affect change in society. And so that's what I mean in terms of conceptualism, that conceptualism can be a cog in the wheel of change in society. Buyaz feels that art very importantly has a responsibility, has an opportunity to change the world conceptually, socially, idealistically. So with that idea in mind, we talk about Bruce Nauman. Um, this is his self-portrait as a fountain. Um, it is from 11 core photographs from 1970. What you're looking at is a photograph of the uh, act of creating art. Um, Bruce Nauman really has been practicing art since the mid 60s and he's questioning traditional ways of making it. Uh, he rethinks what an artist might do and what he might, uh, what art can be. Uh, the way he approaches art differs from artists who go to their studios and make pictures. This again is that idea of co-modification, that art isn't just about hanging something on the wall, it's about art as the concept of the art. He thinks of art as a type of research or investigation. Um, the idea or the activity um, that he's doing is the art. He uses his own body in his work. Um, he records his activities in his studio with photography and video. and. Um, this particular um, self-portrait series as a fountain is a series of 11 photographs about language um, and humor. The photograph shows him in a kind of performance, uh, which he is uh, spewing water out of his mouth like a fountain. Um, his arms are raised and his hands are open to imitate the pose of nude statues of found when we um, look at a decorative fountain. Uh, he acts like the fountain as he sends this jet of water out of his mouth into the air. And so he's really exploring um, the idea of performance and the psychological effects of performance and the intellectual experiences that happen as the art. Nauman carries these ideas even further um, in which uh, he walks around 
a per, he's doing a performance. He marks out a square on the floor and he walks around the perimeter of the square um, in an exaggerated manner, in an interesting pose. Um, he takes videos of it, and what you're looking at here is a video still. Um, he uses masking tape to make the square. He walks on the masking tape. They call it an anti-film because the camera is only used as a recording device. It's not a manipulated image like we do when we shoot a movie. Um, the artist's body is on full display, and... Um, it's just simply him walking around the perimeter of the square in a constant loop. Uh, and so thus the idea of him walking around in a square becomes the art. If you watch this video of Bill Viola cross, called The Crossing, um, he records this interesting juxtaposition of two videos in 1996. Um, the video is played to a soundtrack that grows from an almost inaudible tricket, trickle of water to this deafening roar of water and fire. Um, the tracks are run together, and so the sound has a sense of ambiguity. You're constantly trying to figure out, is it water that I'm listening to, or is it the fire roaring that I'm listening to? And how we perceive it is an important part of the work of art. Um, if you're in the gallery and um, you're there where the, the gallery is where the artist intends for us to watch the two videos and you're watching the water and the fire side by side, it's uh, deafening in the idea that you can't separate the two sounds because they're meshed together. Um, but if we face the other side and we're only looking at either the fire or the water, we assume that the sound is the thing that we're looking at. He wants to overwhelm the viewer with all of the senses. He wants you to find personal significance within the work of art. And the viewer finding personal significance within the work of art is the art. It is what he thinks the art is. It has that artistic artistic component in which the audience's reaction to the art is part of the art. Um, and so this idea of conceptual art really isn't just about the art itself. It's not about the material thing that the art creates. It's about the viewer's experience. And as a work of art, you could call each viewer experiencing the work of art its own entity, its own work of art.